It looks amazing. So, I love it. Keep, <laughs> keep it up. Keep the hard work. I'm gonna keep it on forever. I, I'm a man who tucks his. I'm a man who tucks his shirt in these days as well. <laughs> oh, go on, business army. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I'm, I'm going to apologise in advance. Actually, no. Let's do the intro. Welcome back to the 2021 edition of the Ovid and Kojo Show. I'm Ahmed. This uh, is I'm Kojo. Kojo. It's a new year, and it's a brand new Ahmed and Kojo Show. This year. We're gonna get we're gonna get serious. We're gonna be covering the big issues that uh, we are. everyone's wondering about. We're we're gonna solve all your problems and yeah. our own problems too. Our inner demons this year. So yeah. tune in. Well, stay tuned in. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah, um, I'm gonna apologise in advance. I'm <laughs> exhausted. So if I get weird, it's just because I woke up at quarter past four this morning and started running. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> starting the year with an apology <laughs> <laughs> well it's just I'm just going to make one apology for the rest of the year so then now I don't have to apologise for anything in the future <laughs> um, so Kojo put on his story he asked his followers questions they wanted us to talk about or topics and things like that so yeah, why we're big I, I've got a bunch of questions slash uh, topics so let's get into it I've got them up on my laptop here um, some of these are ridiculous, by the way, as you could have guessed. Okay. So I'll go over some of the ridiculous ones first. Uh, first one is cats. It's the whole, it's the whole comment, whole whole thing. What? Uh, ne- next one is um, sec and girls and how <laughs> to be a man. My personal favourite. <laughs> <laughs> Um, on, oh, hang on. <laughs> hang on, hold the show. What, what, Nitin what? said, love from India, I can't do 10 push-ups, but I will improve. And that's all that matters, Nitin. This is your year, Nitin. As the Omni Kojo show, we, we support you in your endeavours to get 10, po- 10 push-ups. <laughs> okay, okay. We're going to start with um, one of the questions that I was actually most interested in. How... How to not get worse at tricks that you're not pushing at the moment. So how do you keep those tricks that you're not really focusing on, how do you keep them good whilst not focusing on them? This is something me and Ahmed have both dealt with through various injuries and just focusing on training on other things. Um, you you want to start with that one. What's your insight on that, Ahmed? Well, the first thing is... Oh, something that took me a long, long time to actually address is that sometimes that is okay. Now, I know it's kind of deviating from the question, but it is something that you need to accept a little bit, that you can't train everything. And that makes the whole process a lot easier when you are trying to like build things back up. But one thing that always helps in the most general sense of it is trampoline, obviously. Something I haven't done anywhere near as much as I would have liked in my yeah. tricking life. But... It's just a way that you can train more tricks in a smaller amount of time and you can also do it for a longer period of, because you're not doing it on hard floor. It's not as difficult. And yeah, it's just and great. Take less around. impact. I wasn't even yeah. thinking of that. But yeah, trampoline is probably the best tool for mainta- maintaining tricks you're not focusing on. Because mm-hmm. in a trampoline session, because it uses such a small amount of energy, you could get through like a hundred different tricks if you wanted to. And... It wouldn't be unsafe as well because it's so much easier on trampoline. So yeah, trampoline would be a great way. If you don't have access to one, then what can you do? And I think a lot of it comes down to your understanding of technique and how well you can link tricks together in your head. Because if all your tricks are linked, then without training your whatever trick, then you can still like keep it the same or even get better at it without training it because you know how it relates to other things that you are training. That might sound a little bit confusing, so I'll try and think of a clear example for you. Okay, it, it, I, I, I got one. Okay. So, touchdown raise. My wrist has been injured for the last couple of months. I've not been able to train it. But because I've been training side swipe, I've mm-hmm. figured out some new things in my side swipe, mainly around what my right shoulder does and how fast I turn it, and I turn it sooner now. 
And yeah. by figuring out some things in my side swipe, I was then able to apply into my touchdown raise. And after not training it for two months, it was better than ever. So, and I think you can do that with pretty much any trick. Like, as long as you have something to link it to, and that's where the importance of training like basics comes in. If you have a set of basics and you can link from those basics to all of your tricks, then as long as you just do those basics, even if you don't do a B-twist round for like two years, if you've been doing a load of cork rounds and full rounds, you can still be better than ever at B-twist round, if that makes sense. Tricky to explain, but um, yeah. Yeah. What do you um, think about that, Omid? Yeah. I mean, it's harder when you're doing when you're in the earlier stages because there is kind of always going to be holes in your tricks because while you're building those blocks, yeah. you, you can't cover everything all on like level one completed, all of level two completed. It doesn't really work like that um, because you, if you end up getting stuck on one trick, then you're not going to end up progressing when you could just keep progressing a little bit further along and then you can pull it back. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think one of the biggest things for me was just realizing that like if you don't train something and you're worse at it it's to be expected and then it meant that i wasn't pissed when i was coming back to try a thing that i couldn't do like now for example not not training cork snafu phrases i didn't feel confident with it in the same way that i used to and so i was a little bit tentative with it i wasn't doing things at the right time but then i instead of getting pissed about the whole situation i was just like well I just need to see it as me relearning the trick and getting a brand new trick, for example. And then having that approach just made it a, a lot. Brand new trick? See, that that's weird because I have the opposite approach to that. No, this is just because I haven't trained it for such a long time because it's been but like even, eight, nine months. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, I still have the opposite approach to that because, I mean, after like doing my ankle in, blamming my ankle off, mm. then I didn't do triple cork for about a year. But then yeah. I did do it. The first, but then the first time I went for it, I didn't think, okay, so I'm relearning triple cork. It's a new move. I got into the mindset of, I'm ready. I understand the technique. I've done my prerequisites, and I know I can do it because I've done it loads of times before. No, like I try and make it as much of like I try and tell myself I I know how to do it as much as possible rather than no, it's not that it's a new a new trick in that sense. It's more like oh, when I do it, it's like oh, I get the excitement of it being a new trick, and like when I'm building it oh, up, okay. I'm not like oh, I'm not pissed because I'm trying to do the trick. It's like because the, the mentality going into the trick, if I'm not doing it straight away because I used to be able to do it incredibly from nothing, then I start getting frustrated and I don't react in a way that I would normally because I'm not calm and I'm aggravated and whatever. So it's more in that, that front as opposed to like the learning the new trick, I guess. So okay. just excuse my on turn it. of phrase. Being excited about it. All, all right, I've got a couple, of, <laughs> couple more questions here. Well, a bunch. Some of them are really, really stupid. One of them says, hiring trickers as bodyguards. That's the whole thing. What's, what's he even, what's he talking about? You know? It's just a bad idea. Most of them are like, it's not hired. relatable. It's not relatable. <laughs> I've never had to hire a bodyguard, not once. And if I was going to hire one, it wouldn't be a tricker. I work with trickers. I wouldn't hire a tricker to preserve my life. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you <laughs> that right now. <laughs> I'll be long gone. Uh, um, okay. Here's one for Ahmed. Style creator Ahmed. Mustached innovator Ahmed. <laughs> Um, I look dead behind your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you think the next big mainstream trick slash tricks will be? What do you think, Ahmed? Tell the people, guide us forwards. Um, I have no idea. It just it it's in that weird in between stage where people aren't doing shuriken cutter quite as much, or I'm not seeing it quite as much, but the new thing hasn't quite emerged yet and it's always hard to tell but there's been a lot of mo there's been a lot more front swings going on so i think there's going to be something that comes out of front swings that will probably be the direction that everybody goes i can't say one trick in particular but i think front swing is going to be the yeah. new in thing it could be the front swing power stuff really gets pushed because you know now we got like the front swing cali roll it's not going to be it'll only be so long until front swing like snap double 
And then, like, you got the Envergado twist, front swing, like, Envergado twist, hyper hook. And there's loads of front swing variations that are below the level of Cali roll that haven't, they, you don't really see much. So yeah, I think cool. uh, we might see a lot of them coming as front swings are pretty popular right now. One thing I'm really excited about is seeing more people doing the front swing based uh, swing chains. So, like, someone doing, like, the old one, two, at to triple cork or something. So you do like aerial semi or gainer semi, front swing raise, swing cork semi, front swing raise, swing double cork semi, front swing raise. Mm -hmm. swing <laughs> like that's what I'm trying to fucking do. It shows do. they could do that right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to see it done hectically. Is Ooh. that a word in the most hectic hectically, manner? Hectically, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> it's on the Kojo show. Whatever we say is a word is a word, all right? Um... <laughs> Like, quick question. Oh, yeah, I saw in the comments earlier, someone said they were playing CSGO with me, and I don't know, I don't, I've never played that, so I don't think you were. Just, just saying. What's CSGO? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Counter-Strike. It's what Hal plays, I think. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, yeah. So, one of these questions, which relates to something that I've been, um, I was thinking about today, actually. You know me, thinking about tricks from time to time. So, Maintaining energy for multiple days of tricking. How to recover fast without feeling broken. So I, I got a big one here for, for this that I've been doing recently. Like, so I don't plan sessions too strictly because, you know, you never know what's going to feel good on the day. But what I do do now is I kind of decide what I'm not going to train. So I kind of have a pool of potential tricks that I'm going to train. And then I train whichever ones are feeling good and make combos out of them. And then the next session, I have a pool of different tricks. And if you do that, so you have all these different sets of tricks, then it means like Helicoptero, for example, I have a session where I'm focused on them. I'm doing aerial ones and gainer ones and working towards new ones. But then I won't do them again for like two or three sessions. So all the muscles that are really heavily worked in that trick get to rest a little bit, even though I'm training. And that way... I've been training a lot lately and my body's been feeling pretty good because I never, once I train, like if I do a session with a load of swings or something, then I'm not training swings for like four or five days. Like, you know? Well, what do I you think about that? Approach, yeah. yeah, I find that as well. Um, it's pretty fun too. You get to train lots of different things. Well, you notice it most when you learn a brand new trick. You could have like the exact same session that you normally would, same level of intensity, same amount of tricks, but then because you learn a new trick in that, you end mm. up aching like a motherfucker the next day. Yeah. And so when you kind of scale that up, you do need to let certain muscles rest because you start working your hip flexors when you're doing helicopteros or whatever, or your adductors, and you, you wouldn't normally be training those in swings, for example. So if you do, if you, and even boiling it down to like, oh, my left ankle aches a little bit. I'm just going to focus on wraps and GMS and stuff like that. So I find that does help. But one downside of that is kind of your body getting conditioned to, because I have had this before where I've been wow. training one section of tricks and then I change what I'm doing, even if I'm fully warmed up or whatever, but it takes such an enormous toll on my body because I'm doing something so different to what I would normally do. So Wait, it like... What do you mean? Okay, let's say, for example, I'm doing a bunch of swings for, yeah. like, a, a month. Or, like, I'm doing a bunch of touchdown raise punch trips. Then when I come to doing a lot of, like, flex-based shit, it kind of fucks me up. And I feel like the, I have to ease myself into it a lot more. Because when I've just been training punch stuff and I've been trying to get trip swing, and then all of a sudden I'm, like, arching my back and pushing my hips you mean out in the as same, much as possible. Do you mean the same session? Nah, like, the next session after. Oh. Yeah, I find it kind of, my hips aren't used to it because I'm so used to just being in this tight, wrapped up position. So one thing, just be wary of kind of jumping straight into kind of polar opposites, even if it is a different session, because your body's not quite used to it. So just build it up and don't rush into it. Which kind of leads us on to a question we got in the, in the chat here. How do you incorporate load monitoring in tricking? Just kind of, so this, this whole subject's about like, yeah, not overdoing your body, but still being able to get the training in and consistently progressing. Now, with with that sort of thing, I wouldn't be too militant about it. I think it's just really good to understand your own body. And that takes a long time. 
to figure out how to do. But that's my kind of approach. I just know I can base off how my body's feeling, how much I should do. So if, if I'm really not feeling well, then I'm, you, I think just being prepared to do very basic things is huge. Like I used to always go to sessions and want to kill these tricks and do all these combos. But now I go to the gym and if my body feels a certain way, then maybe I'm just drilling like single basic tricks for the whole session. So I think just being open to that is really, really good for preserving yourself and like still being positive every session. Well, here's a question. Do you think you can, do you think you can really get to know your body without injuring yourself because you don't have anybody there? And I know, I know it might sound crazy, but it's almost like you can't, you can't know where the line is until you go past it. So I know all of my points of reference when I'm feeling my body out is like, okay, even if I do one trick and I'm like, oh, there's a twinge in my back. I felt this before, but I've carried on and then I'll get injured. So I stop. Yeah. But without those points of reference, it's kind of hard to know where that line is because you, you can always push it. Well, I think it's just a, that's the sort of thing you're just always going to be learning over time. And unless if you had a really good coach, that would help a lot. But for yeah. the most part, you're just always going to be learning it over time. Someone mm -hmm. said, I was literally just watching Cole's cork tutorial. I'm guessing that corrected from Kojo. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of the ultimate cork guide. It took a lot of faff to make it was hard my camera got smashed while i was making it because we tried to get a shot from below of me doing a cork and then um dilk adam dillywing the forgotten trick archives master also stupid idiot put the camera right in front of my foot as i corked so i kicked the camera and it it was his fault it was his fault because i told him exactly down to the centimeter where i was taking off and I took off exactly there. If there's one thing I know, it's where I'm taking off in a cork, you know? So now my, my canvas screen's smashed. And that was all, all for you, Kojo's Trick Lab members. <laughs> so you could get the ultimate cork guide for this unnecessary shot I didn't even need. It's stupid. But um, yeah. <laughs> didn't need to do it at all. But yeah, it's, it's all good. Um, what were you saying? I got sidetracked. Uh... I don't know, but Ch Chess said injuries are blessed. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were talking about fucking uh, learning your body without going too far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the sort of thing you just have to... I think everyone figures it out for themselves over time. Like, listening to other people's advice definitely helps because then you're kind of just being more aware of it and seeing what other people do and how much they rest and train and condition and all that. But really, is you do have to figure it out for yourself because it's going to be different for everyone what works best. Like, what works really good for Ahmed doesn't work as good for me. If I train like Ahmed, then it fucks me up. Like, Ahmed likes to go super hard on um, his legs and lifting at the gym. Whereas if I go super hard, then my body's just... It, uh, it all shuts down. It's a, a constant state of tension. And then I'm much more likely to get injured or I have to take a big period of time off and it messes me up. So what works better for me is doing much lighter intensity sessions, but like all the time, like a couple, sometimes three times in a day, I'll be doing some mobility and working on my hits and squats and stuff like that, but just body weight. Yeah. I don't know. The whole, the whole advice thing is such a tricky one because you're almost, in some sense, just just as good learning on your own as you are by taking someone's advice because you don't know whether their advice is going to be good or not unless well, it's certain people. Well, that's why it's, I think it's good to listen to lots of advice. Like true, from true, KTL, true. From, from having all the videos from different people talking about their training, it is nice because you can take like elements of different people's training, just hearing like how they approach things, you know? Like mm. there's certain bits I've, I've taken from other people for sure. And yeah, that's my own training. Uh, yeah. All right, more more questions. Let's see what we got. We got one from uh, Tiki Wu, UK quad corker. That's crazy. There's a UK quad corker. <laughs> I was thinking about quad cork the other day. I was thinking, is it possible for my body to do it? I feel like on a tundra floor, I need a consistent period of time on a really good floor to build up. But yeah, it's a different note. Um, he said, whether style power or flow is more important in tricking. What do you think of it? Wait, where's the final? Uh, can I only pick one? 
I guess. He said, which is more important, style, power, or flow? Kind of all the same in some ways. <laughs> I don't know. It's, in my opinion, you can't... No, actually, I think if you have to choose one, I would say flow. Maybe oh. style. It depends on, like, flow is style, though, isn't it, really? Because if someone's really, yeah, they I have, like, so. a really flowy style, like, that's just a key element of what their style is. How much okay, well, the, the reason yeah, I say I that is because you can't, I, I don't, I mean, obviously, it's all subjective, but to me personally, I would rather watch someone who's super flowy but not doing anything very powerfully, for example, I don't know. I always go back to him. But like, even though Andre Katozzi, he does have power when he does the things that he's doing. Yeah. But it's more of a flow-based kind of movement. And it's not like he's doing fucking quad cork and trip trip and shit. So it's kind of like, I think there needs to be a certain level of power in order to do flowy, stylish things that look cool, even if it's a lower level. But you, I don't really like watching power stuff if it's got no flow or style like if everything is just like j jumping like if you're doing super powerful tricks but it's just like there's no i don't know conservation of momentum within your swings and you are just jumping as if it's like some crazy trampoline type situation or you've just got really strong legs it doesn't look there, that there's great so to many me. there, i mean there's a lot of people who trick like that as well and i think maybe so for me we're just on the style versus power debate and stuff. Like, I care much more about style now, for sure. Yeah. But I also, I, I don't know, for, from my personal perspective, it's like doing different variations, doing like the cork slash gainers, the cork scissor grab thing that I do. To be able to do that well, to do it as well as I want to anyway, when it comes out nice, like that's power. harder than squeezing a triple cork. But yeah. I know, but no one else would, no one else appreciates it like it is as hard as squeezing a triple cork. But I, I think that might just be biased because maybe I find power stuff easier and other people would find all these style moves way easier. I think well, that's probably work way harder for the style stuff than power. You've definitely stuff. done triple corks a lot more as well, including tramp stuff. No, probably not though, because. What more it, than that trick or tricks of that nature? Probably not. Really? Yeah, because I can't just go out and rep 20 triple corks, whereas that trick, you can you rack up the numbers way faster. Yeah, but when, when you have... It's about easier to do you to the well. trampoline. No, but still, though, most of the time on trampoline, I'm not just twisting. I'm normally doing variations. Yeah, fair. But I don't know. I, I don't know what your trampoline training looks like. I don't know. I think it's really hard to do moves really nicely compared yeah. to just squeezing hard, harder combos. But... This is where, yeah, yeah. You, you do need a certain level of power, in my opinion, in order to make stylish things look stylish. Because otherwise, yeah. it just looks bland. Because, like, this is the whole, like, I've never been a fan of people that are doing weird tricks just for the sake of being weird. And then there's no power in it, or there's no real connection within the combos. The combo structure's not there. It's, like, super disjointed. And I guess that this could be something said for that. But, yeah... To me, it's just not not that appealing, to be honest. Controversial comment on <laughs> What's this? Well, what do you think about... What do you have to say about this one? I, I love watching high-level female trickers because most of them don't have as much power as male trickers, but they use their momentum and energy so efficiently. Uh, disagree? Because if they were using it efficiently, then they'd be at a higher level, in my opinion. I'm trying to think. I'm just trying I'm trying to think of an efficient female tricker. I mean like, literally... don't, don't get me wrong, there are there are female trickers that can use their momentum within combos well. Um Olivia but... Rando's got pretty good technique on a lot of things. And that little Japanese girl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, I don't know though. I would. I can't. I can't think of any. That's a weird example because I wouldn't think of her as particularly efficient. I, I think we'll see more. I of guess. That I guess. I would, I would assume that what this guy is getting at is saying that because their level of power is lower than the general male tricker. 
they have to use technique more in, in, order, maybe, to, maybe, in order to get the, yeah. to the level that they're at. And maybe maybe better that technique than, I was going to say better tech than your average male tricker because the average is pretty, like, just muscles it, I guess. Yeah. Would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a question here. Guys, any advice to begin tricks? Sign up to Kojo's Trick Lab. Learn tricks way, way easier. I don't know. I wish I had that. Now, like, now we got the app and whatnot. If I started, if I started tricking with all of that information, with a goddamn program I can follow, and then like hundreds of tutorials on everything, and mindset talks on every aspect of tricking, then I'll be really good at tricks. Much better than I am at tricks. Because me and Ahmed both did loads of things wrong when we started. I couldn't do a proper aerial for about a year. Whereas if I had a good tutorial, it would have taken 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, let me, yeah. Just, let me just respond to this thing. one guy. Go on. It's, it's Wolfgang Tosh. Earlier, he, sa he said a couple of times that he liked my running vid. So, say, appreciate you. Um, and also, he said, what editing software do you use? Now, this is the same as, I don't know, anything. It doesn't really matter what you're using. It just matters what you put into it and the thought that you put into the, the video. And then the same with tricks, which kind of leads me on to like, my, my, I've been thinking a lot about my approach to training because now the UK has gone into complete lockdown. All the gyms are closed and they're going to be closed for at least another month and a bit. So I've just got a lot of time to think about how I'm going to approach training. And I, because it's so cold, like when I went for a run this morning, my hair froze. That's how fucking cold it was. So I've been thinking about the best way for me to approach it. And it's difficult because I was enjoying tricks so much. But when, when you're faced with a situation like this, let's say, for example, you're injured or you can't trick quite as much as you would like, it's a lot easier for you to get into this like, oh, I wish I could do this, wish I could do that kind of mentality. But the best thing for me to do right now is kind of do the boring stuff that I don't want to do, which is focus yeah. on stretching and the real basic stuff, like basic kicks and kind of figuring out where I want to take my tricks over the next year or so. Because I've just been having fun getting my old well, shit back. You can set yourself up for success. But See, then the world will probably close again. It'll be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and for the question with the editing software, we both use Premiere Pro. I, I did answer that, by the way. You say it? I yeah. thought you just said that it doesn't matter. No, I said, but we both use Premiere Pro. Oh, did you? Okay, well, uh, another one of these comments, by the way, I got to say I dis disagree. Alenka from Russia has textbook technique on her tricks. She doesn't. No, she, she's Who good. is this? It's Alenka, she's, she's, pretty, she's pretty good. She's pretty good. But I, I don't know. I'm, and I'm just honest about these things. It's like, I, I wouldn't say that I have textbook technique on pretty much everything. The only thing, I think the trick that I have closest to textbook technique on, I mean, maybe a gainer, there's not too many things. If I do a gainer flash, there's not many things you can point out that aren't correct with it. And maybe Webster. But that's it. And I, I, I don't know. Yo, like, that Webster clip that you put on the KTL page, that was sick. I know it's just the Webster, but I really enjoyed watching that. It was amazing. <laughs> I <laughs> love my workout. But, but that, that's the thing, though. Um, yeah, it just depends how you see textbook. Like, she's got o okay technique. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, can't, I can't think of a trick off the top of my head. I'm sure I know her if I saw her. Because I do know there is some female trickers in Russia that I've seen that have been quite impressive. But, yeah. Yeah, she, she's pretty good. Wait, is she the Russian one or the Polish one? No, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think she's the Russian one who trains with Ilya. He's, they've done sync combos together. Oh, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, nah, it's not textbook technique. I mean, well, when you've got Anise as an example for any of the tricks that she's been doing, then it's kind of like, come on. That's not textbook in comparison. And I'm not hating, but it's like, but, well, there is a reality to the this, situation. This, this question leads on to it. Uh, which... Which one trick of style do you enjoy the most? And that made me think of uh, Eduardo. Because I've been watching Eduardo lately. He is, his tricks are so perfect. Some of the tricks he does, <laughs> it's ridiculous how perfectly he can do these things. Will Cody said, Thelma, who trained with Corkson, she has some pretty solid tech. I don't know about that. With, with some things, let's say. 
Uh, yeah, she does with some things. With some things. But we yeah. all do with some things, you know? Like, yeah. Yes. A apart from people like Eduardo. <laughs> Eduardo. He's so good. He's, he Ed does stuff. Some of his tricks, I'd say he does the best out of anyone. Yeah, 100%. There was I was watching his um I was watching his corks to dub of Brooklyn Zoo the other day. Yeah, that clip. Post, that clip is fucking sick. The that way he does corks. Was... <laughs> uh, they're just so so beautiful. But it's not like that kind of because this is something that I've hated for a long, long time. When people do ice corks and it's just it looks pretty, but this is the issue when you do things that are stylish and like flowy or whatever but it's not got any intention behind it because at the end of the day it's just the cork so you, like it's all well and good making a really beautiful cork alex d does it amazingly yeah but when alex d does his normal corks as well they're not quite to the same extent of like pointed toes and hips being in the right position or whatever but he's got real intention so to me i would rather see swing chains of that than just one ice cork and like, I feel like a lot of the people that are doing one singular ice cork could do multiple ice corks to dub, like 10 to dub or whatever, because they've got the power. They have a, well, a good enough understanding of the technique. They would just have to drill it a bit. And it, then it that would be the cork. It depends how you approach it, because some people's like ice cork technique makes them go much higher than a normal cork, and it's pretty inefficient for doing multiple swings. But it just it's depends how, what kind you do. But, but yeah, those Edwarders uh, cork swings to dub, one of the coolest things I've seen. It got me watching more Eduardo clips. I was like, yeah. one of the best to ever do it. And 100%. Most people don't even know. But I, I think a lot of trickers, and I, this is because the way the community is built up. So you've got to think of it as like a, some kind of pyramid. It's like a big old triangle. Put my face in that. Yeah. That's uh, a bloody space, man. There we go. That's it's a like space. That. It's an upside down art. At the bottom, the most amount of people in tricking are like under 20 years old. That's the majority of trickers, I'd say. Just from what I've seen, it seems like maybe over 50%, maybe like 70% are under 20 years old. Yeah. And then as they get older, the pyramid gets smaller. So there's like maybe only a 5% of people are over 30 or whatever. And what that does is because over everyone's, um, as you get older, then you appreciate tricks being done well a lot more than you just appreciate level. So I, I think that's why you see just... Why um, is that, do you reckon? Um, I, I think just you grow older and wiser. <laughs> like experience as well, because you just don't... Like when you're starting out, then you have, you don't really have a way of understanding what's hard in tricking and what's not. But what you do understand, it's easy to understand a backflip. And then it's easy to understand, well, if I do a twist in it, back full. If I do two twists, double full. Three twists, triple full. Four twists, quad full. And from there, you're like, okay, so quad fulls, you, you, can, get a, you can grasp how hard a quad full is. But if you're a beginner, you're just not going to be able to grasp how hard, like, GMS Helicoptera is. Okay. You but, just can't. So there, you have no point of reference. But that's... I mean, that's much rarer than the cart quad, and I'd say harder than cart quad, but you won't, people aren't going to be able to appreciate the more technical moves or the more aesthetic things, like how hard is it to do a perfect corkscrew compared to do, like, squeezing a triple cork. It's harder to do a really, really clean cork than it is to squeeze a triple cork, but you're not going to get that as a beginner. But the older you get, the more you realize and start to appreciate the more aesthetic moves. And, and that's why you see people like Eduardo, who no one's really paying attention to, when he's a much better tricker than almost everyone. Yeah. So do you think that even now, for you, you appreciate these things because of the level of difficulty, but your understanding has just expanded? Because now, because before you used to think, oh, well, you know, the hardest twisting or highest level, most generic move is the one that I understand. But now, because I understand how difficult it is for Eduardo to get his tricks to look the way they are, that's why you like them? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You do, so you do think it's based on the level of difficulty of I in the aesthetic? Not just the level. I, I mean, it's just nicer to watch. But yeah. I, I think because you lose the wow. There is, for me, and probably for you as well now, there's not much of a wow factor to a cart quad because I've seen loads of cart quads. So it's like, it's just, 
uh, another car quad. It's like, yeah, cool. But it's just well, it's like when trip. someone twists so fast, it's kind of like there isn't that much difference between a trip and a quad. Yeah, it, do, it doesn't so it's look like it does kind of better. just mold into the same trick. Whereas, I don't know. For example, when I was young, whenever I when I was like a lot younger, whenever I go to like a museum or like an art gallery or something, I did not give a fuck. I was like, yeah, yeah, dusty old people drew these pictures. All right, lovely. Okay, let me see some, I don't know, explosions or whatever. Whereas as I've got older now, because I know how difficult and how long it must have taken these people to construct these works of art, even if it's something that I don't necessarily understand, I can still have an appreciation because of how much heart and blood, sweat and tears would have gone into it. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, I think it's, you you do need that like age and experience in yeah, order to really to appreciate it to a certain level to, to appreciate like Alex Hunter you need to get to a certain level of understanding otherwise you'd rather just see a quad and you'll think that's harder than what he's doing Alex um, <laughs> yeah but um, a really good question from Pablo Tricks here what would you say is the average age of the top 5% of trickers level wise now 5% covers like thousands of people so let's just say if we say the actual let's say change it to what's the average age of the best trickers like the top 20 trickers in the world and the answer to that would be like 19 18 maybe they're pretty much all under 22 yeah i'd say like 18 19 yeah um because i think it's more heavily out I think there's just more of the older trickers that are like really killing it because all the younger ones are still yet to really come up. But then you no, I mean like people other than the most obvious ones. And they're still all like the older generation. Like how old's Alexander now? Is he twenty two? No, I think he's maybe twenty one. He's really young. Okay. Okay. Probably, I think Ethan Turner's like twenty. Yeah. Probably like eighteen, nineteen. All the Japanese are teenagers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from Taka. Yeah. But, but yeah, pretty young, because tricking's a lot easier when you're young. Like, yeah. your body recovers faster, it can take a lot more impact. You don't have as many other things to deal with in your life, you can focus more on the tricks. There's just a lot of benefits. It's a lot easier to get good at tricking if you're a teenager than yeah. when you're older. Like, way easier. Um, yeah, a lot more accessible. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any more questions? I do, on my big list. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see. What's good? Someone said, please come to India. Brother, I can't go to the gym in my <laughs> own city. How am I going to get to India, bro? You can't go to a coffee shop. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's tragic. Um, but I do want to go to India. India looks it immense. Look mad. Everyone hanging on trains and shit. I know, they love, love it. putting so many people on trains, but just wait for the next train, Jim. Yeah, bro, just, just walk. Like, there's too many people on that train. Um, okay, so, um, okay, here's one, here's one. Most of them are stupid, but here's a decent one. What backgrounds, tumbling, taekwondo, b-boy, etc., create the best styles? What do you think? B boys, like you got Alex D from that. You got Alexander Anderson, Chose. It's quite a strong base. Some yeah, some strong trickers come from like a B boy background. I feel like the martial arts slash tumbling. Just putting those two together. I mean, that's what made Michael Guthrie. That's what made. True. Uh, well, well, yeah, mainly martial arts or sport karate. Yeah. Well, is he Taekwondo, though? What what kind of martial arts did, like, any... Karate. Is it karate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think martial arts is kind of... It's a, it's a perfect base. In but, my but he did say for the best styles. Not the best... Because think how many trickers, like, sport karate guys have the wackest styles in the world. Because they all, it all looks exactly the same. Okay, they okay. The same okay. Tricks. They, all, they all do cheat 12... <laughs> Hook Envergado, backside 12, hook. Okay, but hook. how about... That's the advanced sports karate. How combat. about a martial artist hyphen uh, b-boy? 
because then you got the best of the both worlds. So they're coming into it with the kind of technique approach of martial arts. So let's say, let's say you're creating the perfect trigger and you oh, have to choose martial b-boy. Yeah. So they've done, they've done b-boying because they're like that kind of moving about. And then they've done, they've done but, so they're doing, like, they're doing b-boying in a gi. <laughs> a top in a gi. <laughs> oh, they're just doing, they do martial arts in like, the baggiest jeans, <laughs> looking like a 90s rapper with a massive yeah. chain on. They got a boombox playing tunes Tim while they do their forms. <laughs> do forms and Tim's. I like it, I like it. I like the hybrid. Um, no, I think, I think because then you'd have the technique with the kicks and then you'd have, hopefully, approach it from the creative side of b-boy and coming into it from that, that world. Someone said, um, I see gymnastics for mechanics, martial arts for style and clean lines. B boy for raw power. They are like very powerful B boys. They do get really powerful. Gymnastics, yeah. the mechanic. I I don't know because for some moves, but sometimes it can be a bit of a hindrance because gymnastic technique so different to tricking technique. Like you do have to make a lot of changes. It's good for some stuff, like um, cheer, what, cheer, cheer, cheer. You can switch yeah. out for gymnastics. Like, for who example. have we got from actual gymnastics though? Just Taka. Who else is really good at tricking? Who came from a gymnastic background? Is there anyone you can think of? Like, Taka's the only one I can think of. And even then, it's like his gymnastic background, it shows, in the stuff he finds hard, you can see how gymnastics has made that hard. And stuff he <laughs> like, finds easier, you can, lots of the time, you can see how it made that easier. Well, this is what I was saying. I think we should switch it out for cheer because we've got a lot of cheer-based trickers. Yeah, I guess. That have gotten really good. Because I think Kite did cheer, Bailey, Mike, um... Didn't Will do cheer? Yeah, yeah. Um, Kid Wolf Conies. I don't know, just a lot of Americans. Yeah, yeah, they love it. Get, yeah. They get that gym access, I guess, so. Yeah. I don't know, it doesn't matter where you start, though. It matters where you finish, eh? That's what I always say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Morning running. <laughs> all right, all right. What other questions we got? Um, this one isn't even a question. It says, how goddamn good does Haruki's shuriken look? It looks really good. Looks Show really says good. new one. On his, on his most, uh, one of his most recent posts. Is it mad? Oh, he I moved see. so fast. Yeah. It was like he was speeding up with each kick. It was yeah. mental. I saw it was fucking hectic. These tiny trickers moving so fast. It's crazy that, that, I don't know, I wonder where that will go in the future. Will there be different weight divisions or height divisions in tricking? It'd be cool to see. Because it's one of those where it's like, you can only really compete if you're like tiny at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Who's the biggest, highest level tricker? Mm. Probably. I mean, I mean, there's not much in it, but I would say probably Johan. He's a, he's still a little man, but he's, he's not big. big. The, yeah, but the I was biggest... thinking they need to be uh, the biggest out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taka maybe. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, he Taka's probably the heaviest out of the really good trickers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you um, know any big boys who are hitting those tricks. Okay. We got a couple questions. I like, we got one from Josh. What do you do in the run up, like the day before a session and the day of a session to make sure you're not tired? I normally do mobility earlier in the day so my body's at least done something. Um, Try not to. I don't eat too much. Make sure I don't eat too much. <laughs> no, you try not to. Eat I, too much. Uh, sometimes and you, you fail quite a lot. I haven't even I haven't now. For a while, you just make a big deal out of it when I do. But because sometimes it's so funny. Food, then I, I just can't trick. <laughs> because it's not like when you're having a bad session. Because then I'm not going to be fucking poking fun at you. But when you've eaten too much, it's just comedy. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with your theory. You're just like, oh. Oh, I hate too much. <laughs> um, um, someone said YOLO flow. He's he's not that big. 
He's pretty thick. He's pretty fit. He's, he's still a short boy. Though, I mean, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure he's pretty, he's still short. Not like tight. No, he's, he's, he's still like short. medium size. But then again, but yeah, so he, he's pretty good for his size. Someone said Andre because um, he looks like he's tall, doesn't he? He does. In, in he videos, really does. he looks like he's tall. He is tiny. He's a remember tiny we, little man. Remember when we picked him up for that picture of Hook? Yeah, yeah. But I, he but didn't from know from videos, do. I would have thought he'd be like the same height as us, but he's really small. Yeah. So, Dominic, who do you even... You mean Dominic, Dominic Hughes? Hughes? Dominic Hughes is... Tw- he's like as big as me. He's, and, I, and he's, I really don't, good. he's not a tricker, though. I don't think he called himself a tricker. No, he's not, he's not a tricker. Would. But he's really good at flips. Like, to be... Yeah, he's really, really good at flips. All right, someone said, I've been out of tricking for five years, and I'm 23. Is it worth it for me to get back into it? If you want to oh, get you into can it, answer that. then yeah. get into it. I think tricking's pretty fun. I mean, you could just do it a bit, a couple times a week. See how you feel. All the time. That's the thing. Right, See how know. you feel. Do, have, a, have a session. No. Yeah, give, try yourself some like, give yourself like a month or whatever, because if you just go and have one session, it could go one of two ways. You could be like, oh, fucking hell. Like, I'm surprised at the amount I can remember. And then you go into it and you're super positive and you're like, oh, this is great. Or... or you had a terrible session because you haven't done it in five years, and then you're like, oh, fuck tricks. So give yourself a few weeks or a month or, to test it out. For that month, you sign up to Kojo's Trick Lab for one pound. You watch tutorials on the tricks that you already used to be able to do, and you're like, oh, shit. And they're way easier than ever because you understand <laughs> them way more than you used to. So you could do that. Like, that's, Oi. that's another option. Oi, what? listen. Fucking, you and your plugin, you're missing the best comment. That's well, ever well, 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 <laughs> Zelnick said, Dominic, the guy's the guy who's bigger in the stomach area. <laughs> <laughs> the nicest way to call Dom fat. <laughs> he, he's he's bigger in the in the booty region as well. He's definitely bigger in the booty region. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh god, that's brilliant. I love you. Oh. All right, well, what these other... Uh, We're some of the tallest. We are some of the tallest. Normally at gatherings, and I'm taller than everyone. And I'm not even that tall. I'm, like, six foot. But every, yeah. trickers are just short. But pretty much every good tricker is just really short, just because you get better. Except for Slava. Slava's always been, like, a shining beacon of light to me. He because has. He doesn't, and... he doesn't have the body of, like, I don't know, an insane athlete that you would see... <laughs> doing the kind of things that he does and he's just killing shit and then but, he's just doing like the highest Webster's on earth and the craziest front swing seven twist swing dub dub and it's so sick but that's why he's kind of led the way I mean he's he's one of the people who's affected my perspective on tricks as a taller person because it's like it's technique with him he's yeah. so good because his technique is really really good he used and, to blow um, me away See that, that's moves. kind of the only way you because when you're a taller tricker if you're his size you, you can't just force it. You need to have good technique. And his is fantastic. But, I mean, he's been tricking a very long time. He could triple cork when I was learning backflip. Like, he's been tricking a really long time. Well, seeing him do, I don't know, just crushing shit on uh, martial arts mats, on puzzle, puzzle floor, um, just doing combos, like, really high-level, difficult combos through to the easiest dub-dub swings was so, so impressive and insp- inspiring to me. Because yeah. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm long as well. Maybe I can do that. <laughs> well, Josh said about skillers. And I think, I mean, Alex, Alex D's not that tall. And, um... Ali's, Ali's probably Al, tall. Ali is. Ali's, like, yeah. same height as us, isn't he? So, Alex, so he's yeah. another one. He's another one who has really good technique. That's what yeah. you see. You don't, like, you see smaller trickers who, without having, like, that textbook technique, they can still do like very hard things, but you you won't really see a tall tricker able to do high level tricks without good technique. What it doesn't really work? Like some of the the way Nick Fry does some things. If you were six foot three, it just would it wouldn't work. It, I'll you tell you one thing that really helped me as well when I was when I was starting was how skinny I was because as much of a of a little uh, a little string I felt it it was really like beneficial for me to be as light as I was because it reduced the risk of injury. It meant that I could twist faster because there was less of me to move. And then yeah, it just made life a lot easier. But yeah. I hated the way I looked. 
Well, when you look like, like a praying, praying mantis. Yeah, wasn't wasn't a fan. Yeah. That picture of us and Scott Skelton will haunt me forever. <laughs> <laughs> I look fucking Legend. malnourished. I look like I hadn't eaten in weeks. <laughs> uh, I look so young in that picture. <laughs> I, you look like you've just come out of nursery. <laughs> I look like I just came out of the womb. All right, um, what, what questions have you got? Oh, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> um, what was the first? <laughs> what's the first air flip you guys learned? My my first air flip was a front flip, because I just sent it into a a sand pit, and I got it. So, you know? Yeah. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you. I feel like I will have done years and years ago, but I don't really think about it. But when I was in high school, years and years before I started doing flips, when I first saw um, Urban Ninja, I was really into I was really into break dancing and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, because it was a lot more accessible when you're at school and shit. And I remember I could do round off, and everyone thought, "Oh, yo, this guy's sick!" Like in the in the dance class, the people that were doing the dance or whatever, they'd always be like, "Oh yeah, you go and do your thing," and I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm slick, you know." Fuck you you. Round off. <laughs> I, could, I could do round off. But then I remember going onto the field on my secondary school for some reason, just kind of trying to do front flip, but getting scared kind of backing out and kind of doing a webster but like not a webster but just slamming on my back and i was oh. like whoa and then i thought of oh, what if i could like almost land this <laughs> i would just <laughs> slam on my back we literally i'd graze the top of my head on the ground and i'd just slam on my back as hard as possible and knock the wind out of myself and then i just kind of stopped doing that until <laughs> i started doing tricks <laughs> But it wasn't really a flip. It was more me falling down. <laughs> Just jumping onto your back like a maniac. Was anyone watching you do this? Well, I did it at multiple points. The first okay. time I did it, I kind of landed on my back. And then I was like, you know when you convince yourself that something that you did was way better than it was? I'd convinced yeah. myself I landed on my ass and my feet. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to do this in front of these people. <laughs> <laughs> I did it and I fucking wrecked myself. Bro, it was bad. So we've all been there. I'm sure some people watching have been there. Like I've yeah. done a, I've done a round off backflip to neck on grass, um, oh. when show, showing off to to my girlfriend at school. Oh, oh I can't <laughs> think of anything worse. I was like, oh, watch this. It was when I first first started doing flips. I was like, well, oh, check this. I've got an even worse <laughs> one than that. I was coming out of college. I could do flips, and I was like. Uh, I'd learned, you know how sketch my war flips were? Oh, but, yeah. Because it was before I could actually do like safe war flips, but I could, I would just do them everywhere and anywhere. I'd just kind of run and jump at the wall as hard as possible. I tried to do a wall flip off a wooden post outside my college, but it was the most beautiful day of the year. The sun was out. The whole of the college was on this field right outside. And I was showing some people, I necked it hard. <laughs> I slipped. I slipped with my foot on the thing and then just kind of jumped onto my chest and my neck. Oh. Everyone saw I felt like the biggest dickhead on the Were planet. they all laughing? Of course they were. Oh, I love it. I, yeah. I wish I was there for that. I love it when you, when you fall on your, your chest. It <laughs> makes me so happy every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you squeal? I feel like I remember you telling me you squealed when you necked it. I mean, maybe. You know, like when you go, Wah. sometimes I scream. Sometimes I scream. Sometimes I can scream really high pitched. Like I can't do it on demand, but if I'm genuinely scared, then I can be like real high pitched, like like a a lady from the from like the nineteenth century, like Victorian lady, <laughs> kind of what I'm like. When I, yeah, when I get scared. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick, man. Yeah, that does sound sick, you know. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sick. But yeah, th thanks everyone for joining us for the Omid and Kojo show, 2021, back in the game. We're going to do some more interviewing this year. We're going to get some different trickers on. I want to get someone controversial on, so we can get into some kind of debate. <laughs> Who's controversial? Get some drama on the go. Yeah. Everyone's kind of. We should boring. start. We should start a beef with someone. Yeah, I don't know. We need to get the other. Dr we need to get a uh, drummer on. He'll say some mental stuff. Yeah, he'll probably be naked. We need to be in the same place, though, don't we? 
yeah, we do, don't we? Oh, no, no, to do it live. A pre-recorded one. Yeah, we'll just do a pre-recorded one. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Omni Kojo Show. I'm on it. I'm um, Kojo, and we'll see you next time. Safe. Hey. Oh, 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 o